I knew that Adam Hart's mother's cover was dumb. This is literally just an ear on the water. <sighs> Thanks, Floyd. You never cease to amaze me. Okay, I have to I have to address something. I am really excited to cover this. This album is my is my one of my favorites out of Pink Floyd discography. Oh, I've listened to this oh so many times. Let the fun begin. So after the success of Adam Hart Mother, they went on the road in America in late 1970. The round of dates ended on January 1971, where they went back into the studio to record this album. Now at the time, Abbey Road Studios was still equipped with 8-track tape machines, which was found insufficient by the band. So they instead switched to smaller studios, which had 18-track tapes. With that, they started work on the album. But they lacked the central theme for the project, and so the band used several experimental methods in an attempt to revive the creative process. One exercise involved each member playing on a separate track with no reference to what the others were doing. Well, we all know how that went! After some more experimental noodling, they finally completed and released the album in late 1971. Now the structure of the album is the same as that of Heart Mother, except the sides are reversed. So the single side suite is, in, is the final track, and the actual songs are on the first side. And with that, let's get into the ratings. The first track off of Metal is called One of These Days, and it rocks hard. This is one of the most heavier songs by Pink Floyd, and I love it. The predominant element of the piece is that of a bass guitar, played with a delay, creating a weird note placement. The instrumental starts with gusts of wind, and then that bass riff courtesy of water starts. And then while that's happening, an ethereal note by Richard is played. And in the middle, after a pitched down vocal courtesy of Mason saying one of these days, I will tear you to pieces, Gilmore comes in with a guitar jam and then comes this prog rock jam, which I really like. This is a really great opener to the record, and it's a good show as to what comes next. I give one of these days an 8.5 out of 10. The next track is called A Pillow of Winds. It's a great ballad. Uh, this is a great song to break the hardness of the last track. This ballad is sweet and I love it. The softness of David Gilmore's vocals along with the acoustic guitars is sweet. This is which this is which is distinguished by being one of the few quiet acoustic love songs in the Pink Floyd catalog. The t this one and uh, the last one uh, segue into each other across windy sound effects, anticipating the technique that will be used on later releases. I'll give Pillow of Winds a 7.5 out of 10. The next song is called Fearless, and it's a really good song. The guitars at the beginning are great, and the vocals are soft, and it feels like it's comforting you. The song has a riff that goes up, which gives it a kind of campfire feel to it. The slow tempo and metal acoustic sound bear similarities to Pillow of the Winds and the other songs that will encounter later. For me, I think this is a bit soft for me. I mean, I'll personally take acoustic guitars and Gilmore's vocals anytime, but when you're doing a full album listen and you've listened to Pillow of the Winds, it kind of feels meh for me. Not to say it's bad in any way, it's just the placing is a bit unfortunate. Oh, and at the end, there's a field recording of fans in Liverpool's cop saying you'll never walk alone. It's, it's a really good way to end the song. Weird, but good. Overall, I think this song is good. So I'll give it an 8 out of 10. The next two songs are kinda meh. San Tropez is a slow jazz song about party, and Shame is just a bad country song about a dog. Uh, both songs are mediocre, although I will give some credit to Rick's lyrics off of San Tropez. Uh, I think this shows uh, Rick's penmanship beginning to, you know, grow. Overall, I give San Tropez and Seamus a uh, 6 and a 5 out of 10, respectively. But an album review of Metal isn't complete without its masterpiece, Echoes. A 23 minute long masterpiece penned by Roger Waters and the first true masterpiece of the band. Yeah, sure, there are others like Astronomy Dominate, Jack Band Blues, Careful With That Oxygen, and the Adam Hard Mother Suite. But this, this is the one. This is the one. This is the sound that they've been looking for. Most of these albums that will come after this will have the sound of this very song. Echoes began as a collection of separate musical experiments, some of which were left over from the previous sessions, which then the group arranged the pieces in order to make a whole coherent piece. Now let's talk about the structure of the song. 
The song begins with a ping that was created as a result of an experiment very early in the metal sections. I meant metal, not middle. Anyway, after several pings, a slide guitar played by David gradually joins in, and then the band starts to play. The verses are sung in harmony by Gilmore and Wright, and are joined by a riff played by Gilmore. Uh, and then that's followed by a guitar solo by Gilmore, which leads to a funk influenced jam, which lasts for the better part of five minutes. And then there's the middle section. The middle section features Rod Waters using his bass and some effects to mimic the sound of a freaking whale. Yes, that's right, a freaking whale, which lasts for another 10 minutes. After that, it's followed by a repeat of the beginning piano rings and an organ solo by Wright. And then back to the melody from the beginning. Following the science final verse, uh, the end of the piece features a choral segment. Whew! I'm feeling my headed. If you want a better explanation of the song and the meaning behind it, I recommend Polyphonic's video on it after this video. So just check it out for me. Long story short, this song is one of my favorites. In fact, it's my fourth favorite song by Pink Floyd. Sometimes I think that this song overshadows the rest and it's there, but aside, I really love this song. I really do. I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. That's it! We've done it! Time for the final rating. So, my rating for this album, obviously, it's gonna be a 9 out of 10. This album is the sound that Pickford has been looking for. It's a sign that Pickford has got their shit together and now are preparing to achieve greatness. Thanks for watching this episode. I'll see you with another soundtrack. Still not Dark Side of the Moon. Obscured by Clouds. Sorry. Goodbye.